Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope that you guys are doing really great today. And so, of course, we'll be taking a look at what is currently happening across the North Atlantic with focus being on the Western Atlantic, really, as well as that tropical wave that is noted off the coast of Africa. And so our models, multiple models that, that have been hinting at us seeing some development taking place north of the Caribbean, off the southeastern coast of the US next week which is pretty interesting and uh, the tropical wave out there it could eventually become a rainmaker for the Caribbean and so we're going to be taking a look at all that is possible in today's update and so before I go into details please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important video okay and so let us get started with it as we return to this satellite imagery here this infrared satellite imagery we can see that this is becoming this map is becoming very colorful closer to the coast of Africa now all of that color indicates the convective activity taking place uh, in association with the intertropical convergence zone and that tropical wave is propagating along the intertropical convergence zone so the axis is uh, not too far off from where it was yesterday and this wave is moving slowly at around five knots so it's not quickly making its way toward the west but we're definitely seeing all of that convective activity in association with it now as it is going to continue drifting uh, towards the west slowly over the next several days when it eventually makes its way into the vicinity of the Caribbean it could become a rainmaker and I'm going to be taking you guys to the global tropics hazards outlook map very soon but now we want to go ahead and take a closer look at what is happening across other areas uh, drifting over to the vicinity of the Caribbean we can see that things are quiet across most areas most of us are waking to some beautiful sunshine this morning we see a bit of thunderstorm activity within the vicinity of the Bahamas and also Cuba but aside from that there was really nothing much occurring across the region right now so things have definitely improved over the past couple of days not that most of us love it because I mean a lot of us love the rainfall activity but I'll go Going down into uh, northern South America, there is some convective activity seen across some areas, which is expected, and this will be something continuous with that intertropical convergence zone. And uh, I also want to go up and talk a bit about uh, just off the southeastern coast of the U.S., where we're seeing the development of some showers and thunderstorms. And uh, models were even sniffing at something developing within that region, but that seems very unlikely. However, within this general area, we could see something try to spin up as we head into next week. And so guys, now we want to go ahead and take a look at what is going on in terms of that hazards outlook map from the Climate Prediction Center. And so we're focusing on where we see week two, which is from the 24th to the 30th of May. So from next Wednesday to the following uh, week, Tuesday. And so we're focusing on the Atlantic, of course, and we see some shades of browns and some shades of green over there. So those shades of green represent the probability of above average rainfall and going from the coast of Africa westward to the Caribbean to the southeastern Caribbean there we can see that shade of green indicating that there could be some increased rainfall within the region going more over into Central America we can see that shade of brown showing that there might be some below average activity but as for the northern Caribbean we're also seeing where the region is highlighted in the green that is where we could possibly see uh, that system try to spin up as we head into next week. So I'm going to be taking you guys through what the models show very soon here. However, as we return to this uh, map here, the satellite imagery here of the region, in terms of where we could receive rainfall activity today, uh, that is likely for the Greater Antilles, of course, Cuba, Jamaica, sections of Hispaniola, and uh, and also Puerto Rico and also for most of northern South America and maybe even some sections over into Central America but for the east things are going to be pretty dry for the most part maybe some pop-up showers for some areas at the most but a whole lot is not anticipated across the region today and so let's now go ahead and take a look at what the different models have to show and we're going to be starting out here with the euro model and so this is a map showing those isobars which are the black lines and they are lines that join areas of equal pressure of course they're imaginary lines now as we see them become closed in a circular manner with the pressure being at least 10 13 millibars or lower that is a low pressure system and it can sometimes be a tropical cyclones so uh, where we have those greens of course that represents 
the precipitation rate. So uh, where we have those colors, those greens, yellows, oranges, reds, that is indicating the precipitation rate. So let's see what Euro has to show. And there we have the forecast time. And so we can see that going to Sunday uh, of this coming week, uh, there is all of that moisture, all that activity in association with the low pressure area expected to develop. However, as we head to the latter part of that week, that first system getting picked up likely by a frontal system out there, but then we see a lot of moisture remaining behind from the tail end of that front uh, and possibly developing into something. And this is one of those origin spots for tropical cyclones or subtropical cyclones during the early part of the hurricane season. So pretty interesting here. And this wouldn't be preseason development because remember that uh, it was confirmed on the 11th of May that we actually had preseason development in January, but that system uh, remains unnamed. So if we have a development within this region here, the first name is Arlene. And going on to the icon model, icon is showing something pretty much similar going to the early part of the coming week. There it shows that low pressure area developing likely uh, maybe a weak storm within the region. Now, uh, take a look at this. Most of that activity, that precipitation remains confined to the east of the center of the system, likely as a result of the wind shear. So that is a huge problem for tropical cyclones. It is a it is a huge inhibitant factor when it comes on to development because it really helps to displace activity from the center of uh, those developing low pressure systems, preventing it from becoming concentrated. Okay, so first we see the GFS showing that we're going to be seeing uh, that activity there definitely, but uh, eventually showing that the system is going to be struggling to get itself together, again likely due to unfavorable conditions, maybe such as the wind shear, but eventually it shows a broad low pressure area developing well off the southeastern coast of the U.S. And so guys, uh, there are bound to be changes with these model runs because of course we're talking about something a couple days well from now. And uh, these are forecast models here and forecasts are not always accurate. Sometimes they have to be adjusted. So uh, the further out we go, the more the accuracy decreases. But of course, I'm going to be keeping you guys posted in terms of what is expected. And that is really it for this update video. And so I hope that you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be weatherwise.